Godzilla, easily the most iconic giant monster in history, recognizable for its design that even whilst shifted throughout the years has remained true to the original. Well, maybe except for one. His rough mutated skin, his enormous skewed dorsal plates, his gigantic size, these are all traits seen throughout the franchise. But that's not all he's recognized for. Yes, his roar, also considered one of the most widely recognized sound effects in film history. Alongside the roar of the Tyrannosaurus Rex from Jurassic Park and the hum of a lightsaber. Originally created for the 1954 film Gojira by dragging a leather glove coated in pine tar resin across the strings of a double bass, which gave us the haunting yet beautiful sound. But let's stop for a moment and imagine Godzilla as a real creature. We've seen many videos on how big an animal can get and whether Godzilla would really be able to exist, but no one's talked about arguably one of the most recognizable aspects, his roar. So today we're going to answer the question, what would Godzilla really sound like? Now this was always going to be a difficult video to make because unlike my Tyrannosaurus or Spinosaurus sound videos, which are real animals based on facts and scientific research, Godzilla is completely fictional. Understand that Godzilla could not exist in real life, that he would collapse under the pressure of his own weight, and that he would need to eat over 100 million calories per day just to stay alive. But for the sake of analyzing the sound, let's just pretend that he could exist at his normal size. We're going to compare him to real life animals based on how loud he would be and how he would make the sound. And for this comparison, we'll be using the most recent iteration of Godzilla from Legendary Pictures. To make the layout of this video easier to understand, I'm going to break it down into layers. How would Godzilla make the sound? Why would Godzilla make the sound? And what would it sound like? Firstly, let's talk about how loud Godzilla would be. Decibels are the unit we use to measure the intensity of certain sounds, with zero decibels being total silence and anything over 85 decibels being potentially harmful for human beings. For example, a human whisper stands at an average of 15 decibels, and a lawnmower stands at 90 decibels. So where does Godzilla fit into this system? Well, take into consideration that Godzilla is a 393-foot hulking beast of destruction, weighing around 100,000 tons, with footsteps that cause literal earthquakes. During the marketing for Legendary's latest Godzilla film, King of the Monsters, they stated that Godzilla's roar can reach a maximum level of 174 decibels, which is absolutely massive. To draw parallels, that's the same as the loudest speaker that's ever been made, louder than the launch of a space shuttle, an aircraft takeoff, and the Krakatoa volcano eruption. At this level, it has the ability to make windows shatter at long range and cause immediate hearing loss, and potentially death. Yes, death. A loud enough of a sound can cause an air embolism, which is an obstruction of an artery in your lungs, which then travels to your heart and kills you. Alternatively, your lungs might simply burst from the increased pressure. Pretty scary stuff. Anguirus' roar attack from Destroyer Monsters doesn't sound so far-fetched anymore. But Godzilla is a living, breathing animal. How would his organs function? Would they even be able to handle a sound that loud? Or would they simply buckle under the pressure? Let's take a look at similar animals to analyze Godzilla. One of the earliest inspirations for Gojira was a T-Rex. He has a lot in common with the 50s interpretation of a Tyrannosaurus, and that's what we'll use as the base for analyzing him. But also, the size makes a big difference in how the organs function. So we'll take a look at the Brachiosaurus as well, a species of giant sauropod. If we apply the same science we did to the T-Rex, then we can come to a conclusion on what kind of sound Godzilla would really make. Now I've already covered both of these animals and what they'd really sound like, but for those who haven't seen them, I'll quickly recap. Professors at the University of Texas were able to theorize what the T-Rex sounded like by scanning the brain case of a well-preserved Tyrannosaurus fossil, which still contained outlines of the hearing organs. 
It turns out the T-Rex had extremely sensitive hearing organs and was especially good at picking up low-frequency sounds, lower than most humans can even hear. And the bigger the creature, the bigger the organs. And one massive element that contributes to the sound an animal makes are the lungs. In the case of Brachiosaurus, to pump oxygen 40 feet up its neck into its head and brain would have been a momentous task, and it would have needed an extremely efficient breathing system to even function. If it dropped its head suddenly, the dramatic change in blood pressure may have caused the animal to lose consciousness, had they been burdened by mammalian set of lungs. The main drawback that would have come from using mammalian-like lungs would have been that they only had one entrance and exit point for air. Though, thanks to a study from Manchester University, the Brachiosaurus was found to have a super-efficient breathing system. Like birds, they would have had multiple openings that allowed for constant input and output of oxygen and carbon dioxide. They have openings at both ends, plus a series of air sacs in front and behind the lungs. It's these air sacs that inflate and deflate with each breath, acting like pumps that keeps air flowing through the lungs and out a different tube than it went in. And since dinosaurs did not have a syrinx, their primary method of communication would have been directly linked with respiration. So, Brachiosaurus's primary method of making sounds would have been by pushing air out of the secondary air sacs through the throat, which made a low-pitched bellow noise, which is only backed up by the fact the ear canals are extremely well adapted to low-frequency tones. Now, if we take this science and apply it to a much larger scale, more akin to the size of Godzilla, we can get a pretty accurate idea on what the King of the Monsters would really sound like, if he was to exist. The deep bellow made by the Tyrannosaurus would only be magnified and the vibrations along with it. As noted before, the changes in air pressure would cause windows to shatter, but since sound travels through vibrations like an earthquake, buildings would shake, pylons would collapse, and the ground would crack under Godzilla's feet. Sound also travels at 330 meters per second, which means depending on where you're standing, you wouldn't immediately hear Godzilla's roar. You'd see him open his mouth, but it may take a few seconds for the sound to actually reach you, a bit like watching an explosion unfold in front of you. You'd quickly see the windows shattering, getting closer and closer to you before the sound actually caught up with you. So before I reveal the sound, let's go over what we've learnt. Godzilla's roar would have reached a deafening level of 174 decibels. He'd have an incredible range of hearing, which explains how he can detect different titans around the world. His internal organ system would be closer to that of a sauropod than that of a mammal like an elephant, and his primary method of making sound would be linked with his lungs, not his voice box. With my audio editing software, I've recreated what the sound such a creature would make, and it's terrifying. I recommend wearing earphones for the best effect. thankful these monsters don't exist, so you can still have your hearing. What did you think about his roar? Is the original scarier? Let us know in the comment section down below. Be sure to subscribe to us to become a resident today, and hit that notification button so you don't miss out on any Godzilla-related content. I've been Alistair from Dangerville, and we'll see you in the next one.